okay? If you feel like you are going through some struggles, maybe you're in a dark place, you're sad and anxious, I want you to understand that you are not alone and I feel like a lot of us go through similar things, but nobody really wants to talk about how important mental health is and open up and be vulnerable. And I think that's just natural as humans to not want to do that. But I feel like this is the right opportunity for me to kind of talk about some of my struggles in the past. And maybe you can use some of my experience in life and apply them to your situation and help you get out of this funk. But before I tell you a little bit about my struggles, let me quickly just introduce myself just in case you're new to this channel or your first time watching one of my videos. My name is Ben Tadegapur. Most people online know me as Nahamsek. I'm a bug bounty hunter, a hacker, a security researcher, and I used to do a lot of streamings. Actually, in 2019, I posted a tweet. I said 2018 or 2019, I posted a tweet that says, hey, I'm going to start a streaming. And at first, it started with just a innocent Sunday morning streams, and then later on, it became way, way bigger. But that was just the beginning of it because I just wanted to do this community thing so badly that I was willing to give up everything just to make it happen. So that turned into a Saturday, Sunday stream into Monday, Sunday, Saturday, and then eventually Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Mondays. I was streaming four days a week with and without any break on top of my full-time employment. And if you're doing a lot of things in your life and if you're just overworking yourself, that does a number on your mental health. So that was just the beginning of the, the spiral that I went down a few years later. And I'm not blaming it on the streaming and I don't regret any of it. It's just mostly the first time I was really, really working hard in my life and I wanted it so bad that I was just willing to do it at any cost and any cost at all. And eventually with even with my family and friends, I ended up not seeing them as much as I wanted to and because I had a stream. And honestly, the running joke with a lot of my friends and family was that, uh, let me guess, you have a stream this weekend. And that became the running thing and I lost a lot of friends and just didn't get to see, hang out with everybody because I was just so focused and tunnel vision on the streaming. And to top it all off, a few years later, COVID happened and I can't sit there and say that I was the only person that struggled with COVID. I think a lot of us had issues with COVID, unfortunately. A lot of people were kind of affected by it. And personally, for me, it got just made things worse because not only now I was just stuck at home, which that was kind of normal for me because that's kind of what I was doing every day. But it also completely cut me off from seeing my family, even those small amounts of times that I can make the time to go see them. And, and then having a newborn in my family, I really, really want to go see them and see my parents. And unfortunately, none of that worked out and things with my relationship got worse kind of at the end. And by my birthday in 2020, on my 30th birthday, unfortunately, I ended up asking my partner at the time for a divorce, which just to sum it all up, it just made things way worse for me. And I'm telling you all of this, not so much because I want empathy, but it's just mostly I'm trying to tell you that the things that I went through for the past four or five years that kind of got me to fall in love with this personal development and wanting to become a better person for myself and just finding happiness within myself. And I'm not fully there, but looking back at it today, I'm a lot happier than I was three or four years ago. So the first thing that I had to do when I actually asked for the divorce and also just went through the things that I went through is just, I couldn't do this alone anymore. I needed somebody to help me and getting help was the first and most important part of this. And I know with therapy, it's one of those things that a lot of people struggle with. Some people are uncomfortable with the topic. Some people don't want to do it. And I'm not forcing you to go and do therapy. I'm just simply saying, you need to get help. That help could be someone that you really trust, whether it's one of your parents, maybe your grandparents, or maybe a friend that you can vent to talk to, but also they could help you go to the right direction. For me personally, that person was a therapist. And the reason why I started going to therapy more and more was because they were planting the seed. My therapist was planting the seed within, in the back of my brain with things that I needed to do without telling me actually to do those things. So if I needed to get healthy and I was complaining about my health to the therapist, she would try and walk me through and talk through the things that I needed to do as my options without telling me to do them. So there are a couple of things that I've learned the past couple of years and I'm going to talk through them throughout this video. The first one being your environment. Your environment is one of the most crucial things and the environment isn't just where you live. It could be your place of living, which which does affect you, but it's also the people you surround yourself, the things that you do, the, 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 the thoughts that you surround yourself, the people that you are with could also affect that a lot of ways. And I had to kind of change that. So I kind of had to pick and choose who I wanted to stay in touch with because I really need to work on myself more and more to get myself out of this, this funk that I was going through. So I just had to kind of ghost everybody and I know a lot of my friends who were upset by it but it's not that I didn't value their friendship it's just 
I couldn't pour more into them unless I started pouring more into myself. The other one that I had to change a lot was my home. This is the home that I built with a previous partner at the time and I was still living there and I had to change it because memories still linger. That You still get put into those memories or those situations that you were in with your previous partner and makes you think so I had to make a lot of changes whether it was changing my office space from one room to another whether it was changing the way my the, the place my bed was set up and where my tv was in my living room and where the couches were i just had to change everything to kind of just start with a fresh beginning using the cards that i was dealt with so the environment is huge if you are going through something and you kind of are looking at your environment just make those changes the second thing is I think deep down inside as humans, we kind of know what is this thing that is upsetting us. What is this thing that's causing us to feel anxious, to feel sad, to feel upset, to wake up every morning and not feel like ourselves. I think a lot of us deep down know what that is. We think about it, but it's just this, this touchy subject or this uncomfortable thought that we don't want to entertain or think about because that is an easier thing to do. Some more comfortable thing to do as humans is to avoid it and just be in our place of comfort. Honestly, I think discomfort and change is really, really good. Change is a little scary, but trust me, if you're going through some things, these struggles are going to be what make you a lot stronger. So instead of letting them take you down the wrong path, I want you to use these struggles in order to make yourself better and find happiness within you. The next thing is just your health, whether it's your mental health, whether it's your physical health, whether it's your diet. I think health is a big portion of this. If you've been following me for a while, you know that in November is me and my friends come up with this challenge where we make a list of things that we want to do or give up. Those could be either going to the gym for an hour, reading for 30 minutes, meditating for 10 minutes a day, working on a project for yourself. And then you also give up things like giving up smoking, drinking, and just things that we do on a regular basis that it may not be bad for you, but it's just a challenge for you to not do those things for a month. And I'm only bringing up that one month challenge to tell you that was where it kind of got me to fall in love or enjoy the idea of working myself and being in discomfort because it just made me realize how much I needed to work on myself. And that was just the first year that I did this. Giving up drinking was the hardest thing to do because as someone that was going through a lot and I was just struggling very regularly, I relied on drinking a lot and that is not the healthy thing to do. You just, it's an escape that you use, but I had to give up alcohol finally for four to five weeks and that was very uncomfortable because when the emotions would hit me, then I had no other escape to just sit there and think about it. And that's where I started to kind of rely on meditating and journaling every day to get those emotions processed and out of my system. So let's talk about some of these things that I did with this challenge that actually also translated over to the rest of the last three years and I still do it once in a while. The first one is just physical activity. I don't know why, I know there's good science behind this, but there's something about working out and just releasing all that pent up energy or anger out of your system that helps. So whether you want to go on a run every morning or go to the gym or do both, I first started with just jogging. That was just because I had this challenge to do and it was the easier thing to do. I was still uncomfortable with going to the gym and I couldn't push myself to go every day. And I would just go on a jog for about 30 to 40 minutes. It was like two miles. And I'm not saying I jogged or ran the whole thing. I first started just doing intervals of 30 seconds of running and then I would walk for a minute and a half and then just keep going back and forth and I would count I would count to 30 so I know I've you know kind of jogged for 30 seconds and then I would count for two minutes or a minute and a half so I know that was the time that I was walking and I think I was talking to Stoke about this and he actually told me that what I'm doing with my jogs is a bit of meditation because I'm just focusing on one thing and I'm not thinking about anything else I'm just in that moment present by just counting one to 30 and then one to 90. And I don't know it was meditation, but he told me like, hey, maybe you need to look into meditating and that's something that may be good for you. And that's kind of what opened my eyes to meditation and finding an application that does guided meditation. You can do this on Spotify if you have them, Apple Music has them, or you can use an app that's just designed for this and look for the different topics that you can go through for meditation. So that was the second bit of it, is just having a five to 10 minute break during my day where I just sit with myself, focus on my breathing, and just listen to someone telling me how to just manage my anxiety and my the feelings that I'm going through and just processing them. And then later on, I was introduced to journaling. And I think journaling is probably what changed everything for me because as I mentioned earlier, when you're someone that's actively drinking as an escape and you put that aside, you need somewhere to process all the, the thoughts that you have on your mind. And for me personally, I was someone that was overthinking a lot and I had a million different voices in my head at all times. Journaling let me not obsess about those thoughts anymore. So every morning when I would wake up, I did three things which were game changer. One was 
writing down something that I feel grateful for. The second thing was writing the things that is bothering me on my mind. So for example, if I'm waking up and I'm feeling very sad about my divorce, I would write down, you know, my divorce is on my mind. I feel sad because X, Y, and Z. And just getting that out of my brain kind of helped me not obsess about it throughout the day. So journaling is one of them. And then the third thing was just make a to-do list. I don't know why I started doing this. I wasn't someone that was super organized back in the day. And I think I needed some way to feel productive and, you know, quote unquote, I want to say productive because what I was doing isn't productivity, but it was just a feel good activity to say, hey, if I get these things done today, even though I'm going through some things, I'm still going to be happy with my performance, especially as someone that had a lot going on. I was still making content and I was still you know, going to conferences and talking and trying to still maintain a life. So I think that aspect of productivity or a feel good activity was what helped a lot. I think later on, I went as far as starting this whole thing of, I know it sounds childish as a 30 year old, but just making it a point to do three things in the morning that makes me feel good. One was just to get something done, doing your bed or cleaning up your room or the kitchen or something like that. Just something that around organizing my room or my, my house was an activity. It usually was to do my bed. As humans, sometimes I feel like if you don't have the habit, you just kind of skip over it, but I made it to a point I've done this for the last four years. I haven't gone a day without doing my bed at this point, but I just want to do something that I felt accomplished about myself. So that was just the part of my to-do list was do my bed, make myself breakfast, and meditate. So I had those three things done. I would cross them off, and then I'll make a to-do list for work, and then a to-do list for going to bed. And the last thing of it is the, the dieting part. During that challenge, what we did was we just cut down fast food, and fast food was defined by any place that you had to drive through to get food. Unfortunately, because some of us, you know, were busy and we had jobs and lives, wanted to go out with friends, we couldn't X out every restaurant, but just fast food and processed food was what we cut out. And I think once you start eating healthier and when you start eating better food, it just does something to your body that makes you feel better. You're not always feeling sluggish or bloated. And it just makes you feel better about yourself. Or at least that's how I felt for me that I needed to change. So just the combination of exercising, dieting, journaling, meditating, and having a therapist to talk to were the things that really, really changed how I was feeling and kind of helped me get out of the funk and just gave me an avenue and a, a place to go to anytime that I felt anxious. And I feel like the times that my, my, my feelings were a lot stronger, I clinged on to these daily routines more and more. And the days that I got better, I would still do these daily routines, but I would just cut it down to a shorter version or and not as strict about it. So I think one of the first things that I would suggest doing if you're watching this, if you're looking for something actionable is the first thing that I would suggest doing that worked for me a lot was creating a structure for my day. This is what I would do in the morning. This is my daily routine. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be as small as doing your bed, doing your journal, making a to-do list for the day for work, your personal, and just getting the day started. The second thing that I would recommend doing is having a break in between when you meditate for a couple of minutes, give it a try. I know it sounds weird. Trust me, try for 30 days, see what it does for you. And if you like it, you continue to do it. And if it's not for you, then obviously it is not for you. The next thing is get some help, honestly. I personally realized that I couldn't get out of what I was going through without any help. So I had to get some help outside of my friends and my social circle because I just needed someone that was there to vent to and kind of knew how to deal with the things that I was going through. And then if you've done all those or you have picked some of these things is come up with some physical activity that requires you to go outside. I know it sounds weird to go touch grass, but please do me a favor, go outside for 10, 15, 20 minutes in the morning if you can, go on a walk, go do something physical. And if you wanna to go to the gym and if you've never been someone like me that's gone to the gym very regularly throughout your life, just stick to doing a 30 minute workout. You go in there for 30 minutes, work on a muscle or two, once your 30 minutes is up, build that habit of going and getting some physical activity to let all this pent up energy out and call it good as a start. This is how I started. I did 30 minutes. That was it. I would go in. I would put my clock on for 30 minutes, tell myself I'm going to do this. Then eventually I got into the habit. And now when I go to the gym, I don't even look at the clock. I'm there until I'm done with my workout. And by the time I'm done with it, I get out and I feel great. Next, work on your diet. Try and eliminate some of these foods that you know, you're eating too much of. Maybe it's processed food that you know it's not good for you. Try and cut those out. I know it's not easy. I know a lot of the things that I say, it's easier said than done. But trust me, trust the process and just cut out those junk food for a little bit and just have it maybe in moderation instead. And last but not least, I want you to understand that what you're going through is normal. I think most people go through some traumatic events and honestly, uh, I hate to say it, but I think trauma also builds character and helps you understand who you are and who you want to be in the world. So if you're going through some things, I want you to understand it's okay to feel the way you are feeling and try and do me a favor and not escape it by whether it's a drinking or having an escape. 
find healthy ways to process these, whether it's a gym, walking, journaling, talking to someone, try and process these emotions before they get worse and just really sit in them with yourself and figure things out. As always, I wanted to make this video a little bit more than just a video and kind of give back. So for every comment that we get on this video, I'm going to donate $1 to a charity that's around mental health and suicide prevention. I'll link them down below. And we are also going to donate a portion of all the sponsorships from Naham Khan on May 24th of this year as a part of this movement or as part of this campaign that we're doing. So if you also want to donate, I will leave a link down below for you to go donate to. No pressure if you don't want to do it at all. It's all going to a charity. But I kind of also wanted to do this as a part of this video and this campaign that we're doing. So I'll put all the links down below. I appreciate you watching this. And if you're watching this and going through some stuff, please hang in there. I promise you, you are at the light at the end of the tunnel.